drop to live stream uh, but uh, if you don't see it live you can see it later so I wanted to go ahead and do this uh, a lot of you probably like where has Matthew been lately and I've been lots of places uh, but busy uh, making pots and also doing lots of uh, family events so haven't been uh, I actually even have one or two videos recorded that I haven't even been able to edit and get out on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, that is what it is, but uh, it is almost time to load and fire my wood kiln. So we are, we, I'm blazing today. Uh, we'll start loading the kiln uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll load tomorrow and uh, Thursday and then start the firing Thursday night and uh, into Friday and Saturday. So. Um, but anyway, like I said, I just wanted to uh, do kind of an impromptu live stream here just to get the information out that uh, we're getting ready to load and fire my wood kiln for firing number eight, which is exciting. Uh, also to kind of give you guys a sneak peek of all of the pieces that I have made and what's going into this firing. Uh, and then also just to do a little bit of uh, glazing uh, on live stream here. So uh, I know that's one thing I hardly ever do on videos is glaze because... Honestly, it's not my favorite thing to do, but it is literally one of the make or break moments in making just about all of pottery is glazing. You can take a piece that's not the most beautiful piece in the world and put a really nice glaze on it and save a piece. You can take a really nice looking piece that's thrown, put an ugly glaze on it and ruin it. So um, anyway, so glazing is, is vitally important uh, to the whole process, but uh, of course in a wood kiln, you don't necessarily have to glaze everything. but I still glaze uh, a large percentage of what I put in my wood kiln. So uh, we're, uh, like I said, going to be glazing some pieces today. And uh, then, uh, like I said, live streaming. I'll, I'll put out a schedule, uh, probably going to be live streaming on Friday at some point, And then on Saturday again at some point to show different parts of the firing, which if you've seen it before, it's going to be very much the same as what you've seen in the past. Um, maybe a little bit different crew of people helping. Uh, but uh, like I said, sometimes on sometime on Friday and then also sometime on Saturday, I will be live streaming the firing of the wood kiln, and then we'll live stream the unloading as well. So, and I'll probably do both of those on YouTube and Instagram like before. But currently, we're just on YouTube live. So, uh, anyway, welcome everybody. Uh, sorry, I started uh, like I said, just a flash impromptu live stream. So, uh, sorry if you're just getting the notification, just showing up here. Uh, but uh, I was going to show everybody around all the pieces that I have made so far uh, that I'm in the process of glazing for this wood firing and then uh, glaze a few pieces on live stream and answer a few questions and just kind of have a little relaxed kind of uh, time here uh, hanging out. Uh, I'm going to flip the camera around here so I can show you guys uh, some pieces. So we have down here we have some really large planters, a couple uh, big covered jars back there that are for a special order, uh, a bunch of mugs, some small lidded uh, jars. I have some baking dishes, some kind of like large and medium baking dishes, some apple pie for two, uh, some more little medium jars there. I have a bunch of these uh, flounder bottles that I've made that are flattened, so I threw these round and then flatten them and most of these will be fired laying on their side sitting on seashells so they'll go in the kiln like this some of these i will put glaze on one side so that it will run around when i fire them you can see i put uh, i put some black slip on a few of those uh, that will just change the color of the clay and whatever glaze i put over them here's some more jars that i've made some itty bitties and some medium ones there Alti coffee mugs. I played around again with some new brushes I bought for my little bamboo design. Those are, uh, <laughs> yes, Gene, I made all this stuff myself. Imagine that. Uh, I, I dipped those in white slip and then I uh, painted on with a black slip the uh, bamboo design there. You can see a couple more back there. Here's some coffee mugs here that have been all glazed. Some up here that have been glazed inside and out, and some just lined with a glaze, and then I'll spray ash glazes on. Here's some uh, kind of small, medium planters. Some carved platter bowls. There's some really big ones there. 
Uh, we got some stuff up top as well, some bowls, some platter bowls. Have a bunch of vases over here. That These have had the iron slip decoration, see the dots, and then they've been lined and dipped in one of my blue glazes. Some of these here waiting for glaze. These are glazed in a clear glaze. Here's a nice, another nice platter bowl with a carved uh, carving in the rim. There's some planters over here and some other pieces. These are dipped in white. I'm gonna spray a blue ash glaze on those. Some of my larger pieces over here waiting for glaze. Getting ready to actually to glaze this one here. So that's what I was getting ready to do and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna start a live stream and uh, show some of this off. These here have had the uh, have had some strontium crystal magic dipped and brushed on the top, and then I'm gonna put some other glazes on them. Here's some more you know me's that I've made, waiting for glaze, all kinds of stuff. So, hey Chuck, yeah, I've been very busy, not just in pottery, but uh, in in life in general so yeah it has uh it's been quite a quite a last couple months of my life so nothing too crazy but just just lots going on so uh what clay bodies do you prefer to throw with um if my preference i like uh i like smoother clay bodies though the uh what i have here most of this is made out of an uh oak medium that's from star starworks ceramics here in north carolina I also uh, blended together some of their new Seagrove and new Catawba clays. I put that 50-50 together and uh, blended it in my pug mill um, because I like the throwing properties of the new Catawba and I like the color of the new Seagrove, so putting those together. Um, that's a, a great throwing clay. The clay I use for my gas kiln is Hestia from High Water. I love the way it throws. So, um, yeah, that's another one of my favorites. I'm trying to back this camera up a little bit because I'm going to tilt this down a bit so that you guys can see. I'm going to have that large piece there in the tub here and it's spinning so that I can pour the glaze on it. So I thought I'd back that up a little bit so you can see um, what's going on there. So, but, uh, yeah, when it comes to wood firing, you definitely have to, and depending on what temperature you're going to, you definitely have to make sure they have clay bodies that can handle it. Um, so, anyway, uh, like I said, I'm gonna, uh, the, the glaze that I'm putting on this, uh, most all the glazes I'm working with, just about all of them I have mixed myself. Uh, this is a clear glaze. Um, uh, called Foundry Hill Cream because of the clay that's in it is called Foundry Hill Cream. Uh, this is a recipe I believe that's passed down from uh, Mark Hewitt to Joseph Sand and then to myself. So, uh, actually, this uh, all of my larger pieces like this that I make I usually make with a hole in the bottom, mainly so that if they're an outside piece, if somebody wants to use it in their garden, that it doesn't fill with water and then freeze and bust. Uh, but because of that. Uh, I think, and, and because I think for the ease of glazing, I think I'm actually going to uh, glaze it upside down because that way I can actually pour the glaze. Let's see. So I've got my banding wheel sitting in here. If I do it this way, I can pour the glaze right there and it won't get on the bottom. It'd be a whole lot easier to clean. And there we go, looks like it's pretty good and centered in the, 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 the top of this is sturdy enough and thick enough that it can support all the weight of that. So, I guess we'll get you guys a little closer and uh, tilt the camera down a little bit. There we go. Now you guys can see. Alright, so I'm going to... Uh, Turn this and pour. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna get some glaze on the inside as well. I'm not worried about lining the whole inside of this because of it being a sculptural piece. This, uh, basically, because it can't hold liquid, so I'm not really worried about it. But the outside, I definitely this clear will 
Uh, if I left this uh, as is, uh, it would still look really nice and you would see all the different colors, but by putting the clear over it, it will show off the different colors and slip all the better. And it will actually help some of these from running as much, uh, which actually helps, uh, I think, the look of the piece. So uh, we're going to get this spinning here and then... Oops. Well, that's nice. Gonna make a mess, I guess. There we go. Oh, I got one spot there that didn't hit yet. There we go. I hadn't really planned how I was going to flip that over yet, so <laughs> that worked. But that way the bottom's clean. I can uh, I can pour some glaze in here, or I can dip it in the bucket maybe once this dries a bit to, uh, to get the top of that glaze uh, down in the inside a little bit. So. All right, what'd you guys think of that? <laughs> oh, Chuck, that's awesome. I'm glad you are enjoying the mug. All right, I don't think I have any more that I need to pour the glaze on like that, so I'm going to clean this up. Oh, So I have some more of uh, those uh, baking dishes. I'm going to put some of this clear in. I'll show you how I go about doing that. Uh, do your glazes dry to hard consistency or are they soft? Um, just on the piece, uh, is that what you're referring to, Mark? Um, yeah, I have different glazes that are, are, are you know, that, that kind of range from being really durable on the piece to uh, some that flake off really easily. It just really depends on the glaze, if that's what you're asking.
So all of these here, uh, all these baking dishes are uh, have some kind of a slip inside of them. Uh, the outside of these are going to just stay raw clay as well as the rim. Um, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to stack these rim to rim for firing with wads in between or whether I'll just fire them as is. Uh, but either way, I just want the glaze on the inside. So I'm going to pour the glaze in, kind of swirl it around to make sure it gets kind of just under this uh, lip here. And then dump the extra out and then use a sponge to clean the rim off. Uh, and then the outside will just stay completely raw and get salt glaze on them. So that's what I'm going to do with all these bacon dishes here. Uh, which can be a interesting uh, uh, or can be tricky at times as far as the technique. Get you guys a little closer here. You won't be able to see me, but that's all right. That's Measuring cup is not the best, so I like that. I just get it in there, and I just kind of roll it around to get it underneath that lip there. And since I've already spilled some out of that one side, I'll use that side to pour out of. And if something like this has handles, it's a good idea to pour out of a side that doesn't have a handle, because then you don't have to clean up around that handle, which can be tricky. There you go, that's uh, one that's, one good thing about wood firing is I did that and it's ready to go, other than uh, putting the wads on it and putting it in the kiln, which is a whole other part of the process. But, compared to glazing for most ways of firing, it is more simple. Like I said, so these slips have been put on and then these have been bisfired. These are bisfired at a lower temperature than most most pieces. These are probably only bisfired to about 1600 degrees. Uh, most people that uh, electric or or uh, gas fire usually bisfire to you know like 1900 degrees or so. Uh, with the wood firing, I'm not so concerned about that. The firing is so much slower that. Uh, I mainly best fire because it makes it easier to glaze than glazing greenware and makes everything a bit more durable for storing as well while while I'm waiting to, to glaze and fire. Dirt Dauber coming by to say hi if you didn't see that. Another one where I did red and white slip on that one. Works good to wipe that off right after you glaze it because it comes off a whole lot easier than letting that dry and then trying to wipe it off because it hasn't soaked in quite as much. So wiping it off right away definitely is a big help. Also having a good sponge is a big help. Uh, I used to buy 
I'm gonna change the uh, angle of this a little bit. I used to buy all of my sponges from Lowe's Hardware. I bought uh, grout sponges. I still buy grout sponges, but I had a, uh, somebody that helped me wood fire bring me a couple sponges from Ace Hardware. And uh, they're the same, like I said, it's a, it's a grout sponge or masonry type sponge but the quality of the sponge is so much better uh, I think I have a package over here I saved the package from the sponge just so I could remember uh, but uh, because I use these for a throwing sponge I use them for a cleanup sponge and just the quality of the sponge material is so much better the uh, sponges that I used to get from Lowe's used to be this quality and now they're cheaper uh, just less quality so there you go if you need to know what sponges I use it comes in a big so this is pretty much half of the sponge right here and I cut it in half for just a cleanup sponge or I cut it in quarters for a throwing sponge and they work amazing so from Ace Hardware tile and grout sponge really have a good sponge uh, not a sponsor but <laughs> Let's check them out. Uh, here's one of the ones from Lowe's that uh, I got that is, uh, like I said, is a tile and grout sponge. But if you can feel, if you could feel the difference, you'd be like, yeah, totally. You can tell this one just doesn't soak up water as much. It's it's really rough feeling. Um, it's kind of weird. I don't know. It just doesn't work as well. Um, this one's a better quality material. So. Check any uh, comments. Uh, Mark, sorry if you're still here. Yeah, is there anything you can add to strengthen uh, the soft glaze that chips easily off when dry? Yes, most of the time if you want to a glaze to be strengthened uh, as it dries, bentonite would be one of the things to add. A lot of glazes, uh, some glazes have bentonite already in the glaze recipe. Uh, but if you know anybody that does greenware glazing, most of the time there's uh, probably like 2% at least of bentonite in most of those glazes. Um, you could probably add bentonite to any single glaze uh, and it's not going to affect the glaze itself as long as you're adding, like I said, that 1% to 2%. Um, but that, will, that should strengthen the glaze uh, as well as help it if you are greenware glazing. It helps it stick to the... Uh, greenware that much better. Greenware glazing, I've done it and actually have done a little bit even today, uh, but the most of my work I don't do greenware glazing, uh, mainly because the way that I glaze, I just uh, have certain glazes that I use and certain techniques that uh, just work way better to have uh, bisqueware uh, and uh, Greenware, most of the time, if you're going to greenware glaze, it's best to glaze on, uh, gla on greenware that's not completely dry yet. And in order to do that, your glaze has to be so much thicker than if you're using bisqueware uh, and you have a shorter window of time of when you can glaze. Uh, and it's like I said, just with spraying glaze as well, which I do on a lot of my pieces, um, I just didn't want to have to learn and adjust all that I do with spraying glaze to work with uh, greenware. So it's just easier for me to bisfire everything and then work with it in that in, uh, as bisqueware. Uh, make a mess of that one. Also, if I was doing something like this with greenware and I spilled it down the side there, it'd be a whole lot harder to clean that up without messing the clay up, if I needed to wipe down the outside edge of that, you know, if it was, especially if it was not dry greenware, you know, you could just, if you scrub something too much with a sponge, you know, you bring grit to the surface, uh, you know, I just wouldn't be able to handle the pieces as roughly as I can now using glazing greenware. The biggest advantage, I'd say, to glazing greenware is if something messes up during the process, uh, even if you're getting ready to put it in the kiln and you crack it, you can just put it back in the slip bucket and make something out of it. You don't 
you don't totally lose uh, what it was, uh, the clay that was in it, uh, from breaking a piece that's this square. Here's a couple large uh, baking dishes. Like I said, still have handles on them. Uh, I'm going to glaze these the same way. I've got some others that I've already glazed uh, with my blue. But these uh, will have this uh, clear on the inside. Alright, put these bumble back on the board over here. Hey Cynthia, hope you're doing well. Our family's doing great, everybody's healthy. Uh, just a little chaotic of course here with getting ready for a wood firing. Wow, I straightened the camera up, you can see I'm set to leaning on this table here. Um, probably what I'm gonna do now is, uh, probably the best thing would be to dip that. I really don't wanna get it on the outside though. I might um, probably just gonna pour some down the inside rather than dip it, uh, so I don't get a second dip line on the outside of this. Try to pour some down the inside. but not pour enough that it goes all the way through to the bottom or out the bottom. Um, and that's not the best pouring one I have. So. Let's see about this one. Mm, it's not the best pouring one either. Thank you. 
have to say these are probably my favorite measuring cups to pour with. These glass fire king ones. They're heavier, uh, but it's pretty durable and they pour really well. So I'll probably use this to pour with. Alright, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Don't really have this planned out, so... Hey, it worked pretty well. Dripped a couple times down the outside here, but those should blend in. And because I poured it upside down, oh, it did come out of the bottom, but the bottom was all clean. <laughs> so that's a whole lot easier to clean up than if I poured it upright on the outside and the bottom got completely covered. So. I think I'm going to, uh, I don't know if I can dip it or not, but I would like to dip the top of another, another one of my large pieces there. Uh, I'd like to take oh, another dirt dauber coming to say hi. I'd like to take the top of this one, the middle one there, and dip the top of it in this clear and then spray an ash glaze as a transition, transition to get some drips going down that one. Either that or I just need to leave the whole thing raw, which also would look very nice. Um, probably better to leave it raw than to mess with it. But uh, then it can just get the ash glaze, the salt, uh, all from just the atmosphere, um, which probably should, would be a good idea. So Hey Seth, which one? Is that the one that I just glazed? Is that one for you? Well, if you want to pay for it, sure. <laughs> hey Kathy from South Texas, welcome. And Maria from Florida, hey. Uh, yeah, Maria, I, I, I haven't pinned the map yet. You're right. I, I, I don't need to forget that. I need to look back at your message and uh, pin where you guys were from. It's been quite the, uh, quite the couple weeks <laughs> on my schedule. Not that it's going to take long to pin the map, but uh, all right, Gene. Yeah, you probably got work to do. See you, buddy. So most of what's going to happen. All right, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. Oh, trying to loosen this up. There we go. Well, Seth, you know you get a discount, and then you get you you get some credit for helping with the firing. Credit, credit towards your purchases, right? Hey, Timothy, welcome. Uh, so most of what's going to happen uh, after I get all of these glaze, so you can see here on, on a piece like this, uh, it has the slip work. You can see the dots underneath. Uh, that was put on, on the greenware piece. It had been bisfired. 
then the uh, uh, lined it and dipped it. This is my Rutile Blue. Dipped it down to here, and then the next step will be to actually use my spray booth, which is right here behind you, or behind me, behind the camera. Oops, sorry. And then I'll spray an ash glaze in this area here as a transition. So I usually spray just kind of like this much of the piece here, and that allows it to go from this glaze where there's that hard line of glaze into the drips of the ash glaze, and then the background of the whole bottom will just be the raw piece uh, for uh, the glaze to drip down, or the, uh, the salt glaze. I'm just looking for a piece that I can show you that on. Here's a uh, utensil holder from the last firing. So this piece, uh, you can see some slip work there. There's a clear glaze and some black slip lines. And then I, I lined this with a white. And then I actually, this one, I just sprayed an ash glaze over the outside. I didn't actually dip it in another glaze. I just sprayed an ash glaze over the outside. And then where it came down and dripped, over top of the raw clay, which is down here at the base, you can see these drips, and in the background is just the raw clay with the salt glaze and wood ash behind it. So, uh, what do I mix with the ash to make it sprayable? Uh, my main glaze that I use is just a uh, is red art and wood ashes. Uh, mix that 50/50 by weight, and then uh, of course you have to sieve the ashes first to make sure you get all the chunks out of it. Uh, and then uh, mix it by weight. Uh, I have other glazes that actually don't have any ash in them, but they use whiting as the flux, similar to ash. Uh, you can find recipes all over the internet for ash glazes or fake ash glazes. So I'll do that with a lot of pieces. Um, uh, as far as either spraying ash glaze on the outside over a completely raw piece whether it has slip or not and then uh, or if it has been dipped in a glaze and then I just spray a band of ash glaze to give me a transition between where that line is because uh, you've probably seen before if, if, a, if a piece is dipped in a glaze and there's a hard line where that's dipped to sometimes that glaze won't run past that line it just kind of stays uh, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I don't like the look of that, so I like to spray an ash glaze as the transition for that to get a nice feathered look into the drips, um, which is something that I prefer and something I've learned to do. So, like I said, I, I spend a lot of time glazing for especially something that I don't necessarily enjoy to do a whole lot of, but it is what it is. Hey, Savannah, thank you so much. Hey, Alma. All right, let's see. Um, I'm looking at my electric kiln back here. It's, it's fist firing, but I haven't heard it click recently, so I was wondering what was going on. Maybe it's just full blast, um, so it's not clicking. Anyway, uh, let's see. I'll find a few more things to glaze to show you. Um, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll show you another thing that I've been working on. Here's my white glaze over here. 
show you one of the things that I've been doing quite a bit of. Well, not quite a bit, but I've been doing a decent amount of. Uh, I haven't done as many of these for this firing especially, but I've been doing some vases where I'll carve uh, in, or the last firing I did a bunch of platter bowls where I carved in like this, and then I'll fill that carving with a glaze uh, and then wipe away the extra. And I, at first when I tried these, I was trying to be really careful about filling in that, that area very specifically with the glaze, and then uh, came to realize that actually it's best just to kind of like get it all in the area and then I take one of my green scrub pads and just kind of scrub off the outside and it won't go down in the, uh, the, the screen green scrub pad will just stay on the surface uh, get all the excess off the outside and then I can uh, wipe it with a sponge after that so uh, what I'm gonna do is get a brush a little bit smaller one let me grab one over here Hey Sally. Well, I'm not gonna show my face so you can continue to wonder what I look like. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a little while. Uh, lots of reasons for that. Maybe we'll get into them, maybe we won't at some point. But uh, anyway, so what I'm gonna do is like I said, just uh, get some of the white glaze here. And I'm not gonna be too particular about it, but I wanna get it all down in these spots here. Um, but if it runs out of those spots, I'm not too worried about that. And just, oop. Makes a little bit of a mess, but uh, trying to get it just in those cracks was very hard without getting any anywhere else. So I kind of abandoned that idea because I was like, yeah, I'm gonna drive myself crazy just trying to get it in these cracks without it going outside of them. And then I thought, well, to try to clean, especially this white, this white is like a really sticky glaze. And even if, I, uh, like when I'm glazing jars, uh, you know, and I gotta wipe off the rim, a lot of times I can dip a piece in, as soon as it comes out, I'll wipe the rim with a wet sponge and it comes right off. This white, even right out of the dip, it doesn't want to wipe off really easily. So I'm like, man, what am I going to do? Because the white's one of the best glazes to do what I'm doing here with, because it stands out against the clay body. Um, so on jars and stuff now, what I do is I wet the rim a little bit with a wet sponge before I put the glaze on, and that helps me wipe away the excess. Uh, and then for these, it works best just to use that green scrub pad uh, to clean off the flat surface and like I said as long as you hold it kind of flat it doesn't go down in these grooves and doesn't clean out the white that's down in there uh, and then I can sponge away after I've gotten the excess off of the flat surface Anyway, sorry to pick on you, Sally. Thank you for being here. And, uh... Yeah, I got in a time crunch for getting pots made for the wood kiln and the whole idea for making videos had to go out the window. Because, uh, it was pretty critical to get, uh, get pots made. All right. We'll go over here and I'll grab a green scrubby. It's 
to just one of these green scrub pads like this and then just by doing that takes off most of the excess but doesn't remove it from down in the cracks One of these dirt daubers have not been bothering me all day. As soon as I start live streaming, they're all over me like I'm their best friend. Now I can take a wet sponge. Clean it out. Got a little bit still down there right in the foot, but I'm just gonna leave that because it'd be so hard to get out. Uh, and it'll just give a little accent to that fluted bottom. Uh, so not too worried about that. So there you go, so tip if you do any carving and you wanna get glazed down in there, instead of trying to just squirt it into there with a little squirt bottle, just brush it on and then, uh, oops. Drop the sponge and then uh, clean the extra off. Macy, did you want to say hi? In case you didn't know, we have a new addition to the family as well. <laughs> Come here, Macy. Say hi. Oh, here, let's do it this way. There we go. Say hi. Look, right there, look. Look. Lazy. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, she's a miniature dachshund. About five pounds right now. Five or six pounds. She's a real sweetheart. <laughs> she's turned into a shop dog for sure. She likes to come out here while I'm working and just sit around. I've got her a bed out here in the shop. And or she'll find just somewhere to lay back here in the back of the shop. <laughs> Is that comfortable to you? Hmm? <clears throat> All right. Anybody else have any questions or comments? I'm not gonna stay on here too much longer. Uh, let's see. John Smith, I found it necessary to glaze the inside of wear and let this and let it sit overnight before glazing the outside. Okay, John. Well, yeah, that if that was uh, what you need to do, it really all depends on the glaze, the clay. Uh, there's a lot of differences that you may need to be able, need to do based on your setup. Um, yeah, I knew a potter as well that would do that would line everything on the inside, let it set up overnight, and glaze the outside the next day. Uh, I thankfully don't have to do that because it allows me to get it all done. Okay. 
Thank you, Margaret. Sally, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's been quite a couple, few weeks. Uh, like I said, most of it good, but uh, just uh, busyness, lots of things going on. So, uh, yeah, I have I have lots more to glaze out here. Uh, does anybody have any questions before I go? Because I probably just need to uh, stop here. Like I said, I want to remind you guys that we'll be doing a live stream. Uh, Friday at some point I gotta I'll put a schedule out and I'll put it on Instagram and I'll put a story or an if you know a, a post out on YouTube as well um, it'll be Instagram Facebook uh, but I'll be doing a live stream Friday during the firing Saturday during the firing and then Tuesday will be the unloading so that's uh, kind of somewhat of a schedule for the next several days um, so we'll be doing that and uh, we'll be doing it on Instagram and YouTube as I said um, so yeah, but I need to uh, get back to focusing on what I need to get done. Um, so I have to get off live stream just to make sure I can focus and know what I need to do here. So anyway, any more questions, comments before I go? So if you're interested in the live streams, yes, they'll be coming up in a couple days. So thank you, Sally. Yeah, we, I've got a I've got a really good crew, uh, and I've got extra people this time since since it's summertime. It's, uh, it's not supposed to be too crazy, 85 or so on Saturday, which is the hottest day. Uh, but I've got a crew of about six people coming Saturday, so we can have people to rotate in and out, so that nobody gets too hot. People can take breaks and sit in the shade or sit in the AC if they want to. But thank you so much. All right. Well, you guys have a great day, and uh, we'll see you soon. And uh, as always, any questions, comments. Also, I'll be doing an online sale. I'll be doing an in-person sale the 16th, 17th of, of this month here at my studio, as well as the 23rd, which is the next weekend. And then I'm planning an online sale for, I think, the weekend after that, maybe the 29th, something like that, 29th or 30th. You can check my website. There's details on there under the Events tab. Uh, as well as, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put that out on on uh, Instagram as well, at least when the in-person kiln opening is. Online sale will be coming uh, for pieces from this wood firing, and then I still have my crystalline pieces that I am going to do an online sale with. Maybe I'll put those in with the uh, wood fire sale. Uh, I already have them photographed. Uh, just haven't done the sale yet. So, all right. You guys have a great day. Appreciate you all. We'll see you soon. Bye.